Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the v Spotten again. This ship is very, very strong. I've had some very nice games in it so far, but I've got to show you just a few more that I've been playing recently. This ship can play surprisingly aggressive. The more I've played it, the more I've realized that it can get away from fairly difficult, chaotic situations thanks to that amazing concealment. Comparing it to something like the Mines, another premium German tier 8 cruiser, this ship is just so much better concealed and it allows it to sneak around the battlefield a little bit more. The smoke also allows it to set up in more positions where Mines might not be able to do as well. Although Mines does have the benefit of larger caliber guns and a little more DPM. Although the Vespotten's not too bad on its own as far as DPM is concerned. Pushing towards this side of the map, very, very common to find light cruisers or any ships really to kind of set up on this island right here and then farm any of the battleships that are sitting open water. That doesn't happen as there's a Sharnhorse 43 and actually there's a couple of them about to push around this corner. <laughs> you don't always expect it, but in this case, we are going to be able to deal with them. We have four and a half kilometer smoke fire range, allowing us to smoke up here six kilometers away from the Sharnors, and he won't be able to spot us while firing until he gets within four and a half of us. That's very powerful. And if we can set up in positions like this, where maybe there's an, a, a battleship, say an Amagi, providing a bit of a crossfire for us or preventing the Sharnors from angling into us, it allows us to get this AP DPM online and it just absolutely crushes people. The AP is so nice when you're facing broadsides. It doesn't have the improved pen angles or anything like that, but anytime you can get situations like this, it does so, so, so much damage. And I think with the concealment and the smoke, you're gonna have a decent opportunity to at least make use of this AP in most games. I'll swap back to the HE here. I was worried he might angle to us. And still, 4.6? <laughs> yeah, he only spotted us just now <laughs> after us firing. That is kind of crazy. And we've already done a pretty good amount of damage to him. He's basically dead. Round two, next Sharn Horse coming around the corner. <laughs> You're not always gonna find battleships that are just going to push into you. But when you do, it is amazing when you can set this thing up to farm. It's very, very powerful. I think it also does very well in up tiers. The only problems there being the lack of a heal compared to say a tier nine or 10 cruiser. I think this ship might be okay at tier nine. Uh, just the way it is. And then you just give it the normal tier nine cruiser things like a heal, for example, as well as that sixth upgrade slot allowing you to take reload. And I think this ship would do totally fine at tier nine. I think it's that good. Unfortunately for us, it's very expensive. So they've essentially made a very powerful light cruiser at tier eight be extremely expensive or you have to gamble for it. And that's too bad. If you didn't see the video, it's just shy of 24,000 doubloons if you're wanting to do the chain of bundles that uh, this ship is going to be available for. It's also in loot boxes, but again, you're gambling for that. Not sure if you'll ever get it, right? That's a lot of money to be spending on any ship or any game, really. And is any tier eight really worth that? I don't know. Um, I don't think so. Even though I'm in a privileged position, I understand, but... Even with this being a good tier 8 light cruiser, it's a lot. It's just a lot. Maybe this is a bit of a sneak peek, a little preview of a German light cruiser line that could be coming in the future. That could be cool. We haven't seen much out of the uh, German lines recently, I guess. We've got the battleships having their split as well as the DDs. So maybe the cruisers, maybe it's time. Uh, we'll see, but uh, that would mean also that you're getting a unique experience for a bit. And then maybe if this is the blueprint for those light cruisers, then it won't be as unique and it'll be still a very, very expensive ship to get. I don't know. Also, mines exist as a light cruiser, right? That has smaller caliber guns, not DD guns, but cruiser level, light cruiser level guns. And that could be the blueprint as well. So this still could be a unique ship. I found surprisingly good use out of these torpedoes. And I think that comes down to playing it a little more aggressively around islands and around our smoke allowing me to get into positions where these torps can be useful because they do decent damage. And most importantly, we can stealth torp with these. 
Um, that's not always going to be the case with a lot of cruisers at these tiers. It's a very powerful tool to use in games where you're getting pushed back. And any time that you're dealing with a battleship or something that overmatches you and you don't have your smoke available, you can just go into torpedo DD mode. It's pretty cool. In this case, our team is doing pretty well. We're uh, pretty even on points. And of course, these are the games where we're going to have the best results. Anytime the games go late and it's a close match, that's when you're going to have some really fun high damage games, really. Um, our team managed to take out the Congress and we're forced to push here. Even though we're down on ships, we're kind of just forced to push in since the enemy team is ahead on points in these standard battles. So we don't actually have the luxury of letting them or having them push us. So we have to push into them and that becomes a bit of a problem for this ship. The shell velocity is not amazing at range and as people kite away, it's pretty hard to hit some people at these longer ranges. Even battleships can be maneuvering enough for these DD caliber guns. At least we have that 32 mil pen. I think that's what really makes this ship very, very strong at this tier, allowing you to full pen battleships without having to take something like IFHE that would cut your fire chance. And that's a really, really strong tool. So even though the HE doesn't look like it has the most DPM, Compared to some of the other tier 8 light cruisers, it's important to remember that the effective DPM here is pretty high thanks to the extreme pen that these guns have and that you don't have to have that trade-off pen versus fire chance with IFHE. Like you might have to take on, say, like a Cleveland, for example. Mine still gets that quarter pen, so it'll do pretty well, but some of the other nations don't get that quarter pen HE and they have to choose between their fire chance and full penning battleships, or some of the battleships with that 32 mil. Amagi's probably gonna get away from us. We just barely managed to dodge those torps. <laughs> Having a hydro is so valuable anytime you're trying to play in a smoke, so it's nice to see that here, even if we don't have a, um, a heal. As much as I would like that, at least we do have the hydro. I gotta pull away from here just for now. Just, we don't know where that King George is. So I was a little worried he would be flanking, and in fact he was as well as pushing in open water to an Amagi and a Turbitz. Probably not gonna go so well. So I decided to come back and try and deal with this King George. This ship fighting lower tiers is kind of disgusting, actually. The DPM is ridiculous, and uh, especially against tier sevens and sixes, and there's really not a whole lot they can do about it because you just pen so much. I think some of these lower tier cruisers and battleships are not really going to be able to deal with you. It's mostly because of that concealment and that amazing HE pen, allowing you to just farm very, very easily. And I've talked about this ship having maybe some poor maneuverability as a weakness and no heal, poor armor, it's big and clumsy. Yet we took no damage to that King George. The effective armor here, or maybe uh, as I've played it, it's felt tankier than the armor shows, I guess. I think this ship probably should be eating more damage <laughs> than some of these games, uh, or I have been in some of these games, I don't know, but I've been getting away with some really odd plays. Maybe it's just people missing, like King George, I guess, there missed. Um, we kind of drifted around his shells. I don't know, but uh, this light cruiser can get away with a little bit more than I thought it would be able to. Maybe it's that turtleback that I thought would be terribly helpful because of the angle. Maybe it's helpful enough when we're um, when we're angled. Uh, flat broadside, it probably won't be as useful, but considering the steep angle, maybe it's just enough to allow us to deal with battleships at these sharper angles. I don't know. Even swaps to the high explosive and actually does a little more damage and knocks out some of our torp tubes, uh, which I need. So uh, doing the widespread there, probably not required since we were easily able to turn and get our second torps online, but that's a little trick you can use to have a better firing angle for at least that forward facing torpedo launcher. You can use widespread to just fire a little farther forward in front of your ship. Uh, in this case, it didn't really matter. Unfortunately, we are going to lose this game. There was a glimmer of hope here that the Udachi did get proxy spotted or just normal spotted by us. And then I didn't realize I still had high explode or armor piercing, sorry. Armor piercing still in the tubes. So we don't do any damage to him. I don't think I would have killed him anyway, but a little disappointing that I messed up there. And then coming around the corner, it's a Turpitz. I was hoping that maybe the Turpitz had gone somewhere else and I could surprise the cruiser and the destroyer. That was really the only way. And even then the game is just about over. 
I've also found that now that I have Luchins on this ship, uh, the DPM is even better, of course. 140 hits is really easy to get with this ship, so having that extra bit of DPM is very, very nice. So that's 220,000 damage into that one. Uh, very strong performance out of this light cruiser. Even though uh, we didn't quite have the teammates there, that's okay. Very close game, down to the wire, always ones that I enjoy. And uh, Torpedo's doing some pretty nice damage in that one. This one as well. I think the Torpedoes are a very, very important aspect of this ship, allowing you to be dangerous as a gunship, like focused on your guns, smoked up. But then rushing this ship is dangerous because of these Torpedoes. They reload so quickly. You have so many of them that do pretty decent damage, decent range that you have to be very careful uh, anytime you're around nine kilometers away from this ship because it's, it's potentially quite a few torps that you could be eating. In this game, pushing up using these islands, trying to limit who can shoot at me from across the map and deal with this Nagato. I haven't had too many bowl down tier games where I'm the top dog as a tier eight against tier sixes, but I've faced quite a few tier sevens and it's very powerful in me. So I have to imagine against things like a New Mexico, for example, What's he going to do? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, very, very, very difficult to deal with, I think, is what this ship is going to be. Although, I think, given the smoke timing, again, I have to bring that up, these German smokes have a little bit longer cooldown, or at least it feels that way. Um, the smokes probably just don't last as long. And then because of that, we have a minute and 30 seconds we have to survive before we get to our next smoke. I think if you misplay in this ship, over push, over commit to a smoke screen, and you can't get away, there's no easy escape route or ability to get behind an island, I think people will probably die rather quickly in this ship. Again, no heal means that there's not really much you can do when you make a mistake like that, so you have to be cautious from the start. Now I'm getting a little bit of worried about the Strasbourg pushing up, so just do some zoning torps, hope that maybe That'll prevent him from pushing around this island. And then we're going to go after the carrier. And uh, probably one of some of the best zoning torps I've ever done. <laughs> Actually get a dev strike on him. Uh, crazy. I was uh, pretty happy with that, as you could probably imagine. Uh, these torpedoes are no joke, man. They do enough damage at this tier. You know, at tier 10, some of the German torpedoes where they do like 14,000 damage is pretty low for tier 10. But for a tier 8, 14, 14 and a half. That's pretty decent, uh, and especially against some of these lower tiers that we can face, tier 7s, tier 6s. That's a significant chunk of uh, our health bars. And again, showing off the just raw power of the smoke fire detection here. One of the main weaknesses of some of the other HE spam smoke cruisers is this, where their smoke detection, like I think Kutuzov, which is ancient at this point, but the smoke fire there is like 7.7 .7 kilometers, right? So. Plays like this you just can't make with a ship like that. Uh, Anchorage certainly is up there as well. I don't remember exactly what that one is, but certainly wouldn't be four and a half kilometers, right? So it's a very, very powerful ability here that makes it so difficult to deal with. You have to get so close to get that um, detection, that smoke fire detection, that you're easily within these torpedo ranges if the guns haven't already done so much damage to kill you. It's a difficult ship to deal with. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Very, very strong, very difficult to deal with, and very unfortunate that it's so expensive or locked behind loot boxes. I hope that Wargaming adds it in the future for a more reasonable price or more reasonable resource. I think this would have been such a cool coal ship, for example, or even if it was Steel or Research Bureau as well as these loot boxes. I think some sort of more reasonable in-game resource would have been cool as well. Or just the doubloon cost up front to be less than 24,000. <laughs> I suppose technically it's less than 24,000, 23,900 something. 23,975, so technically less than 24,000. <laughs> but maybe closer to 15,000. That's still more than what tier eights go for, right? Tier eights are around that. I don't know, nine to 13,000 mark, depending on if it's a battleship or a cruiser. DDs might even be a little less than that. Things on Black Friday, of course, are even better priced at tier eight. Things like a, a Massachusetts, you can pick up for like, I think 9,000 doubloons on Black Friday, which is a pretty good deal for a tier eight. So considering that this is what, three times that? Well, a little less than three times that, that's, that's pretty steep for a tier eight. Yet, it's a unique experience 
and uh, very interesting to play. It's also, well, it's also kind of busted. It's it's very strong. <laughs> Not sure I want to say flat out OP yet, but it is very, very strong. And as for the build here, I'm still basically using the same one. I haven't tried out something like a lighthouse build yet to get even more DPM. Uh, although that could be interesting. Maybe I'll try that later this week, but the build still looks pretty similar to what you've seen. Of course, heavy HE allowing us to get more damage there, basically for free, not having that concealment penalty since the guns are so small. Maybe I give up Superintendent? I don't know, am I ever getting to the last smoke? Sometimes, I suppose, but I give up maybe Superintendent and Incoming Fire or Last Stand to get myself like a top grade gunner, for example. Could be interesting. Also, I haven't tried a Torp build out yet. This is just stock Torps and they could reload in 68 seconds. It's good. It's good. It has some weaknesses to be fair, but uh, it's a very, very strong ship. I'm disappointed again about the price. I've probably said that so many times already, but uh, I think that's going to be the main issue with this ship is uh, simply that price. The upgrades here, very similar as well. Propulsion mod, almost a must here. You notice I was barely able to dodge some torpedoes, even with the Hydro. Uh, so having that extra maneuverability is almost required every time you're playing a smoke ship. Just to avoid some of those torpedoes that often are going to come after you in that smoke. But that's about it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.